Welcome to episode 10 of The Week in Gear, the show in which I rank the most exciting guitar gear released in the last seven days, all the way up to my pick of the week. So, if you're a gear addict, make sure to hit that subscribe button and prepare to get gas. What a week for guitars. We have a new PR... New PR... Oh, sorry. Uh, we've got a video game themed Jackson and a new build out of California. I'd love a new built guitar. Could build it myself. With the help of this week's sponsor, Stumac. Stumac have a bunch of DIY guitar kits and I have my eye on this offset hardtail. If you'd like to try your hand at building your very own guitar, Stumac have everything you need from the kit to the strings to paint to specialized luthier tools. Follow the link in the video description to build your dream guitar and get a special discount courtesy of your old pal, the Guitar Geek. Okay, let's kick off this week's top five gear list with something weird. In at number five is a pedal from Rev Amps called the Chatbreaker. And what makes this pedal different is that it was designed by ChatGPT. Well, partially designed by ChatGPT. Because sadly, the circuit that ChatGPT designed did not work. But Derek at Rev gave the non-working design to a real human pedal builder who knows how to design pedals and they use that ChatGPT AI device design to create a real working overdrive pedal. It is a blues breaker style overdrive that's apparently organic and dynamic and it's 100% real. It's $199 US and you can get it from Rev's website. Now it was only a matter of time before someone did this and I'm kind of glad that it was Rev. And even though this is not the first AI design pedal, it is the first one that is commercially available as far as I know. Now, honestly, I put one in my shopping cart, but I stopped at the last minute because there was a $60 shipping fee to Austria. And uh, yeah, I couldn't quite get over that hump, but I have enough drive pedals, but I really like the novelty of this one, this AI designed or partially designed pedal. Plus, I think it would make a great clickable YouTube video. Hang on a minute. Nah, I didn't do it. I still hovered over the button. Maybe tomorrow, but I'll have to be quick because there are only 500 available. Okay, number four is from the Jackson Custom Shop. Actually, from principal master builder Pasquale Campolatano. Oh, I can't say his name. Pasquale Campolatano. Oh, I, th I think I got it right. Anyway, he was on the Guitar Stories podcast a while back, and uh, he was a great guest. So find the link for that somewhere and watch that podcast. He's a blast. This guitar is a collaboration between Jackson and the newly released video game Diablo 4. If metal music is supposed to be associated with satanic powers and devil worshipping, this guitar certainly wears its pentagram on its sleeve. Based on the Jackson Kelly shape, which is a kind of explorer shape, it has an active EMG 8160 combo and FU tone Floyd Rose trem system, locking tuners, and that insane red and black Diablo 4 Lilith paint job. Now, I'm no longer a gamer, but I remember playing the original Diablo game back in the 90s, and this guitar certainly captures what I would associate with that franchise. There are only 10 available, and they may already be sold out. I have no idea how much it costs, but if you want to shred your way through hell, I doubt there are better ways to do it. In at number three this week is the ultimate analog delay pedal. Well, that's if the marketing from Boss is to be believed. The Boss DM101 has landed and to be fair, the specs look very promising. Here comes the good news. It is stereo. The sounds are all analog and coming from eight Bucket Brigade device chips, but it is digitally controlled. You can incorporate an expression pedal and it has 12 modes, including multi-head, ambience, and wide. It has four onboard memory slots, but if you're into MIDI, you can access 127 user memories. The demo video sounds really good, but here comes the bad news. Great power can come at a great price and the Boss DM101 will set you back around a whole Jeff, yes. 500 bucks. Analog delays are generally more expensive than digital delays due to the nature of the circuitry. But if you absolutely need your delay to be analog, this could be the only analog delay pedal you need. So 
when you weigh up the fact that it has 12 modes, you could probably replace a few pedals with it and actually end up saving money. Come to think of it, Boss could be right. This could be the ultimate analog delay pedal. Dang. I love the vintage styling that seems to be based on Boss's first ever delay pedal, the DM1, and the revered chorus pedal from those days. However, the DM101 makes far better use of this big enclosure. And my final two cents on this is that even though this is 500 bucks, I predict this will be an absolute hit for Boss. Number two, almost the top spot, is a brand new guitar from PRS. It's the PRS. Mo Kennedy Sig oh. Sorry. Uh, all right. Before I get into my opinions, let's go over the specs. The body is a single cut. It's made out of swamp ash. The neck is a 25 and a half inch scale maple neck and fingerboard. It's got two narrow field MK humbuckers, a PRS plate steel bridge, and this $3,000 guitar comes with a gig bag. Now, some of you are going to get a little upset at this, but this is my list of the most exciting guitar gear released this week. And I find this PRS exciting because it is so boring. Let's ignore the fact that it's probably a wonderfully playing, a beautifully sounding instrument and focus on the one thing that guitarists care about more than anything else, the design. It is one of the ugliest, most uninspired guitars I have ever seen. Also, no matter how many ways you try to avoid saying it in your announcement video, PRS, this is a telly. It's a telly drawn by a three-year-old, but it's a telly. It's a telly silver sky. It's a twangy sky, if you will. Here's the thing that I hate the most about it. If this is supposed to be innovation and guitar design, why does the neck joint look so basic and uncomfortable and old fashioned? Come to think of it, it's the same as the Silver Sky. Why isn't that more contoured? There is something I do like, however. I like the string slots. I like the way they've altered the bridge. No, I do. I think this is a cool design and is actually the one thing that makes me want to try the guitar and be prepared to be absolutely wrong about it and sing its praises. I also like the three strings per saddle rather than the usual Fender two strings per saddle. And this PRS design has two screws to adjust the angle of that saddle. Am I coming around? Now, I respect Miles Kennedy as a monster player and Alter Bridge are a phenomenal band, but I think PRS have released a bit of a lemon here. I don't think this is going to capture the hearts of players and bring around reluctant telly players and naysayers like the Silver Sky did with many Strat players. In fact, the comment I've seen most on the internet is, I will wait for the SE version. So there's that PRS, there's some market research for you. Okay, time for my pick of the week, something actually innovative. <laughs> Week. In at number one this week, the CEO of Taylor Guitars, Andy Powers, has started his own guitar company called Powers Electric. The first range of guitars are called the A-Type, which are single cut, fully enclosed, hollow body guitars. What is that? Well, it looks like a solid body, but it's actually hollow and without any F-holes or anything which means that these are extremely light and resonant. In fact, they're coming in at around six pounds or 2.7 kilos. So yes, extremely light. It's an urban ash body with a maple top, mahogany neck and a rosewood fretboard. But get this, the fretboard has a split radius, meaning that it's flatter on the treble side all the way up the neck for choke-free bending. There are two custom pickup options, either the full Faraday, which is designed to emphasize clarity and warmth, or the partial Faraday, which is designed to have a firm, brighter response. The tremolo on this guitar is particularly interesting. It looks a bit like a Bigsby, but it's a new design by Andy called the Camtail that has string ramps, which are compensated for tension and gauge, so that when you dive on it, the strings move in pitch relative to each other, and the guitar stays in tune with itself, kind of like a lap steel. The nuts and saddle are made out of ebony wood, and it has 21 frets with a scale length of 24.875 inches, 
which is odd, but this is a new design. Also, apart from the tuners and strings, everything is made in-house. So these are going to be made in small numbers to begin with, at least. Now, look at these colors. They are inspired by hot rod cars, and there are nine solid colors available and six figured top bursts. The color choices are absolutely blinding. I met Andy Powers when I visited Taylor Guitars in 2019 with Tolman, and he seemed to be very highly revered in the company, and the word genius and wonderkind was thrown around multiple times. Uh, a few months later, I bought my first Andy Powers Taylor guitar, and genius was right. The use of urban wood is something Andy and Bob Taylor were very keen to talk about, and Andy was telling me how we came to use certain woods in guitars in the first place, and it was usually because luthiers had access to that wood because it was local to them and plentiful. And I'm grossly oversimplifying this, but there's a whole Taylor Guitars project dedicated to using wood that's been planted in urban areas. I will link to a blog post in the video description for you to read. It is an interesting rabbit hole to go down. I highly recommend it. Incidentally, if you're wondering how the CEO of Taylor Guitars owning his own guitar brand affects Taylor Guitars, the trademark for Powers Electric is owned by Taylor Guitars. I think the A-Type is absolutely phenomenal. I love these actual innovations, and one day I hope to get my hands on one and report back to you that all my predictions of this model are 100% accurate, and it is a blinding guitar. Okay, that's it for this week. I would love to know what you think of the gear released, so let me know your pick of the week in the comments section, and as always, there are links in the video description for up-to-date pricing in your region, and if you want more information on anything mentioned in this video. A big thanks to Stumac for sponsoring, so check them out as well, and if you enjoyed this and want to be kept up to date on all new guitar gear, go ahead and click there to subscribe, and I will see you next time.